Alright, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a whole bunch of good news stuff for you today. And I think I got some mm, 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 saucy drama for you today as well. Maybe. But uh, the first article that I want to talk about is that Litecoin Foundation is sponsoring a UFC title fight to increase crypto adoption. <clears throat> so this is the first time that something like this has happened, at least in the UFC. Uh, they're going to sponsor uh, the event of the Ultimate Fighting Ship, uh, Fighting Championship. I don't know how I said that wrong. Mixed martial arts organization. Uh, in the statement, the foundation said that it has become the official cryptocurrency partner of the UFC light heavyweight title fight between John Jones and Alexander Gustafson. Uh, the Litecoin Foundation stated that the spon sponsorship is part of its effort to expand the adoption of digital currencies saying with brands and institutions continuing to push into the cryptocurrency and blockchain, this is yet another signal of this technology moving closer to mainstream. So um, I'm not sure exactly how this is going to go. Uh, this article is all over the place and pretty big news, at least in the crypto sphere. Some people don't really care for it. Some people like it. I think it's great. I mean, I think why not? Uh, I don't know how it's going to work. Essentially, I'm sure there's going to be Litecoin logos probably all over the place. I doubt there's going to be like any kind of commercials or anything like that. But there's probably in the center of the octagon probably going to be like Litecoin logos or something like that. And why not? Litecoin is a great coin. I know some people are Bitcoin maximalists. Uh, but um, you know, Litecoin isn't so bad, at least in the fact that, uh, you know, it's one of the oldest coins. It's one of the longest running blockchains aside from Bitcoin. And it's one of the uh, earliest coins that hasn't become a dead coin, like Namecoin or Peercoin or anything like that. So uh, Litecoin to me, uh, pretty good. So not much else to talk about in there. It starts to talk about a few things. But um, other than that, not nothing too interesting aside from that there's going to be some probably some Litecoin logos and stuff in the next uh, UFC probably like a pay-per-view or something like that, but uh, pretty cool. The the fact that uh, they're, they're trying to move into mainstream and have a actual advertisements in places. And I know there's already some billboards and things like that with uh, crypto, but uh, this is pretty cool. So uh, moving on to the next topic here, uh, I was on Reddit and happened to come across this as, please don't give YouTube cryptocurrency guru, Bitcoin fund manager, 20 Bitcoins. He's lost his mind. And in the end, all you'll do is lose your Bitcoin. And I thought to myself, Bitcoin fund manager, that sounds familiar. And it's actually this guy, this seemingly innocuous uh, Bitcoin YouTuber. And uh, if you actually look into this guy a little bit, it is pretty weird. <clears throat> so first of all, I just want to I just want to show you something. Uh, he he calls himself a fund manager. I think he's in Korea, um, and uh, you're supposed to send him your Bitcoin, and you know he has fund managers that will day trade for you 24/7 and make you more money. Uh, now let me just say in advance that you should never send any youtuber uh your cryptocurrency to day trade for you so far i've been fortunate for nobody to be like here's all my coin i hope that you can day trade it for you because i'd be like here's your coin back because that's not what i do and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna risk your coin my my coin or anything like that um most YouTube, I'd say like 99% of YouTubers are, are not brokers or day traders, um, you know, professional day traders anyway, that could actually be insured. So yeah, don't do that. Um, but I want to show you something that's kind of weird. This is a very sunny decree type move. Uh, bullish. He, he makes like 10 videos a day. Like you can see like nine hours, 10 hours, 11 hours, 12 hours, 16 hours. He literally makes like 10 videos a day. And I just want to show you this title, Bullish, Urgent Real-Time Bitcoin Update. Okay, fair enough. That was 12 hours ago. 12 hours ago. Nine hours ago, super urgent. Everything looks bearish. That was only a three... Uh, that was... That's only like... That's only three hours difference. How can you How can you make a a, a video that says Bullish Urgent... And then super urgent, everything looks bearish. What are you even trying to do here? I don't understand. Anyway, let's try and get into it just a little bit. There's this website here, and I will put this in the link to, in the description. 
because it's quite the read indeed. Uh, unconsciously incompetent entrepreneur Robert Kim, uh, and it goes by like so many different names apparently. Um, so basically this guy has been uh, a Korean American con man for at least 10 years now on YouTube. He goes way, way back. And not just with crypto. As you can see, there's multiple different pictures of him, uh, which is fine, I suppose. Um, but uh, Kim essentially commits quackery, the misrepresentation of the ability of substances, devices, services, products, and expertise, if not given any deliverabilities at all in exchange for money. He has taken people and businesses for thousands of dollars and continues to do so today. He operates under numerous variants of his name and acts as a figurehead for multiple one-man and unregistered facade companies, currently lives in South Korea, holding an F-series immigrant visa, and is, po and is possibly married to a Korean citizen. Uh, he's executing the same fraud techniques that he's been accused of in the U.S. So he's essentially escaped the U.S. because of fraud and taxation, uh, especially in the Korean Peninsula, Seoul, and Busan. Uh, so he, he has dismissed and excused himself from fiduciary responsibility by taking the stance of an unconsciously incompetent entrepreneur. Uh, so he's incredibly well-spoken, persuasive, non-transparent, and frequently publishing content on social media. He has over 10 years to master the craft. Uh, so this just goes on and on and on, deeper than I can probably even have time to tell you. Uh, he doesn't have a college degree. He's not worked in any qualifiable capacity in the industries. He claims to be a subject of a matter of robotics, technology, development, telecommunications, digital marketing, 3D molding, manufacturing, printing, etc., and crypto. Um, so I've actually seen some videos from this guy. It's really actually interesting. If you go to his videos and you go all the way back to the oldest video, um, you'll see that uh, he's actually relatively spot on. Uh, so CME futures and Bitcoin is bad for Bitcoin. And uh, I agree with that. And this is actually just before uh, CME futures came out. And I was kind of saying the same thing. So actually, this guy's kind of right most of the time, which is really weird. But he's scamming people out of their coin and basically pretending to be a day trader when he's not. So he's made hundreds of videos across multiple YouTube channels that he shoots selfie style, used the backdrop of legitimate businesses as operations as either as a pedestrian, a guest, or a passerby, and tries to pass these off as operations of his own. So this Kim walking through a warehouse making a selfie video claiming his company Company produced all the print material. Um, so he simply asked the unsuspecting business, can I make a video promoting you? Then he takes credit and says it's his company and or bidding for the operation occurring in these videos. Uh, he even did this as a guest for a wedding. <clears throat> so uh, Kim touted it. Uh, so early on, um, he touted an identity as a guru sensei master uh, to make unproven claims of magic salts, herbs, and MP3 mantra audio files. He sells for hundreds of dollars that could be used as alternative medicine for healing and self-development. Here's a video uh, that's actually been removed from YouTube a while ago, but martial arts learn how to make a Dragon Ball Z fireball. And this guy, people are trusting with crypto. Uh, meditation and self-help, eh, that's okay. But uh, for the most part, he tries to be so many different things. Uh, and this just gets deeper and deeper and deeper as it goes. It's very interesting. Uh, so I will put this in the description. You guys could read this if you'd like. Um, so he offers brokering services uh, to get a Korean visa, uh, unconscious language learning, Korean plastic surgery broker, a bro I don't know I don't know South Korean wedding planner Asia catering South Korea bitcoins company Korean translation and localization company Korean meeting incentives conferences and exhibitions Asia printing services Asia robotics and manufacturing 3d molding digital marketing uh, so he's just walking around a factory just holding something look look what I do uh, and, and apparently he's just getting money from all these people app and software development Korean dating and relationship <laughs> advice um, so down here is some of the, um, all the way at the bottom here, are some of the uh, reviews of his app development. So he was basically charging people to develop apps for them, and that's okay. But uh, unfortunately, he's absolutely terrible. Um, so in short, he is not legitimate. He will rip you off. Beware. It takes a special kind of slippery, dishonest, dis uh, dishonorable shyster to deserve this treatment and be outed. This dude is it. He is not a legitimate professional. I normally feel sorry. But uh, it goes on and on. This is one of the wor worst apps I've ever seen. It's clear that it's an amateur program that did this. We took a quick look at the source code, and it's a total mess. 
uh, basically looking like a, ch a child developed his his software. Uh, so really interesting. Um, and this is his website, the Bitcoin Fund Manager. So make a profit 24 hours a day. Crypto never sleeps, but you should hire a Bitcoin Fund Manager to trade it for you 24/7. So it's very unlikely that uh, there's no nobody even working for this. Um, that maybe he's just collecting all the Bitcoin himself and attempting to day trade it himself. Uh, because in uh, in this article it says that he's done this numerous n countless times uh, that he makes just one man companies and unregistered companies essentially and tries to send it so it's really interesting uh, because I have seen a couple of videos once in a while these do pop up um, you know on YouTube and such but uh, he basically makes videos extremely frequently and most of them are just total nonsense, like bullish, urgent, update, super urgent, everything looks bearish, like three hours later. It makes no sense, but uh, whatever. Um, so sometimes he's actually kind of right. Like, so, you know, in the article, it actually says that he's very well-spoken, very persuasive, and that makes a lot of sense. So, um, yeah, maybe stay away from Bitcoin. Definitely don't give any money to Bitcoin Fund Manager, unless there's, like, some serious credentials there. Uh, I wouldn't give anybody your Bitcoin like that. I don't even think there's really that many brokers in the world that you can actually send your Bitcoin to that are accredited and insured, et cetera, et cetera, um, that you would want to send your crypto to. So really, really weird uh, what all of this is going on. So this is actually starting to come out of the woodwork a little bit. Uh, this guy has been uh, in social media for a very long time, and that's okay. Uh, most of us have been, but uh, he basically just every few years basically tries to just turn himself into a different... Uh, into a different scam artist, essentially. And it's again, it's okay to change your profession from time to time, even if you want to every couple of years. But uh, when you're a one man company and just taking things and basically scamming people, it's very interesting that it hasn't come out of the woodwork much sooner. Um, so moving on uh, to another uh, important issue, in my opinion, Electrum Wallet has been hacked. 200 Bitcoin stolen so far, nearly $800,000. The details are inside, but we will go to this article on it. Um, a reportedly ongoing hack against cryptocurrency wallet Electrum has seen a malicious party steal almost 250 Bitcoin, commentators reported. Subsequently confirmed by Electrum itself, the attack consists of creating a fake version of the wallet that fools users into providing password information. The hacker set up a whole bunch of malicious servers. So if someone's Electrum wallet connected to one of those servers and tried to send a Bitcoin transaction, they would see an official-looking message telling them to update their Electrum wallet along with a scam URL. So if you use the Bitcoin Electrum wallet be very careful at the moment basically if you use the Electrum wallet you should be fine it's a web wallet and he probably should use something else but Electrum for the most part is okay the problem is is that uh, with Electrum wallets anybody that has any knowledge in this for anybody that doesn't the way an Electrum wallet works it's a web wallet that queue that queries a node for you so you don't have to hold the whole blockchain on your computer which is some 170 gigabytes or something like some ridiculous amount uh, that takes to download. Um, so you can just use a web wallet instead. All great. But the problem is you have to find a server to connect to and nine out of 10 times they actually don't work. Uh, and it's actually kind of frustrating the Electrum wallet. So when you do connect to a server, it connects to a node, it shows you your balance, you can send and receive, etc. All good. However, with the Electrum wallet lately, uh, one of the uh, servers that you can connect to uh, will give you this message. It says security, up. once you connect to this, it says security update required. And you actually can't click on this. So people were saying that what you have to do is actually um, copy and paste this, this GitHub Electrum wallet, etc., cetera, um, and post it into your browser. But when you do that, uh, it's an instant malicious attack and you can lose your Bitcoin. So somebody was saying that they lost 200 uh, total. They've lost 250 Bitcoin or something like that. Somebody said they lost 200, but uh, maybe it's at 250 by now. I don't know. Uh, basically, a million dollars in Bitcoin have been stolen. So if you use the Electrum wallet and you see this update, don't touch this link at all. Get out immediately. Uh, it might be best for now to take off your Bitcoin uh, and put it uh, put it somewhere else for now. So just throwing that out there. Uh, so the next article, Taiwanese police arrest minor accused of stealing millions of power. Uh, according to local reports, a Taiwanese man has been taken into custody for allegedly stealing more than $3 million worth of electric power to mine Bitcoin and Ethereum.
Yang is accused of internet of renting internet cafes or toy stores located on the first floor of a building before hiring electricians to rewire the power supply to the premises in a way that to prevent the metering of power later diverted to fuel his mining operations. The internet cafes and toy stores would be located on the first floor in order to facilitate Yang establishing a mining rig on the floor above and the shop once a new owner had taken over the business. Uh, so basically, uh, the business would just run up this ridiculous power bill and they would have no idea what was going on because the power was routed to the next floor where there were a bunch of mining rigs. The only thing that I think is that if you're going to steal three or $3.25 million worth of electricity, it, I figured you could sell that electricity for $3 million. I just, I just think that at the same time, like you would end up making less money than you would with $3 million of electricity and you could just end up with three million dollars instead of like two or one million dollars worth of cryptocurrency uh, it just doesn't make sense to me but uh he basically got arrested and is uh, probably going to deal with a lot of jail time three million three point two five million dollars of electricity so this guy had a bunch of operations he would rent toy stores and various stores they would uh put uh you know the the entrepreneur would put things down in the first floor for their business and he would route power upstairs to a bunch of mining rigs. Very, very clever, but uh, not going to get away with that for very long as people are going to start to worry, hey, why is my electric bill so high? Maybe we should look into this. Uh, not very well thought out. Clever, but at the same time, not very well thought out. Uh, moving on to the next article here. Former Mt. Gox Carpellis declares innocence in the final argument. So it is getting much closer. Carpellis, uh, the former CEO of Mt. Gox, has affirmed that he is not guilty in the final argument for his trial. In court in Tokyo on Thursday, Carpellis apologized for not being able to avoid his exchange being hacked, but also reiterated the idea that he is innocent. As Cointelegraph Japan reported in July, he declared that he treated the subtracted money as a loan from the company and that he was going to settle later. Hmm. Carpellis has been charged with embezzlement of approximately $3, $3 million from the exchange of manipulating its data to inflate its cash balance. Uh, Carpellis allegedly transferred 340 million yen belonging to customers from a Mt. Gox account to his personal account. And prosecutors asked for a 10-year sentence for Carpellis, who is currently facing the charges in Japan. And during his trial, Carpellis has repeatedly denied having stolen or manipulated Mt. Gox ledgers. So if it wasn't for the Mt. Gox hack, if it wasn't for the incompetence of Carpellis, which is very interesting because if you actually look up uh, and document, uh, you know, Carpellis, uh, Mark Carpellis, uh, he, he's actually a really clever guy. He's uh, quite the little engineer uh, indeed and uh, very intelligent and has lots of little inventions that he made and it seems like he's very very intelligent yet uh mount gox was very poorly secured and everybody lost all of their or at least most people lost their bitcoin and i think today if most people did not lose their bitcoin then we would have way more uh crypto millionaires because the time at the time that it was hacked was at the time when uh bitcoin was really exploding in price when it was really starting to get hundreds of dollars uh, as opposed to just being less than hundreds of dollars you know in, in double digits it was essentially becoming triple digits and uh, you know Back then, a lot of people had way more Bitcoin. It was not uncommon for people to have dozens of Bitcoin or hundreds of Bitcoin on Mt. Gox. Uh, and that's a lot of people, not just necessarily whales that we know of today. Uh, so we would see a lot more crypto millionaires. And it's it's probably one of the biggest tragedies of uh, cryptocurrency that has occurred to date. Uh, moving on, um, this is the Bitcoin hash rate. As, a, as the estimated hash rate, rather. Um, and as you can see here, January 18, uh, we were at about 13, um, 13 million uh, terahash there, 14 million. And now we're at 40 or so at the low point 32, which sets us all the way back about six months still. And uh, it's very interesting. You can see the volatility right now and how it started to try to go back up and uh, due to the price of cryptocurrency going back up really, really quickly there. Uh, so Bitcoin went down to 3,000, 3,200, and people were just really dumping off and turning off their ASICs. So this is very interesting how you look at these. And, you know, uh, before this, 
before January here was the all time high where this is, uh, you know, about the all time high here, you know, 1226 was actually a little bit before that a week or two before that. But uh, I like to imagine every time we're moving along in pixels, people are just plugging in ASICs, 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 just plugging them in, plop, 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 as you go along. And you can see here that people are unplugging as it goes. And so right now, people are making a little bit more with ASICs, but it's still nowhere near what it was way back in December when you're making $40, $50 a day off an S9 minor, $30, $40, $50 a day. And now you're making just a few uh, because even with the decline in hash rate here, you can see that it's really only about six months back and six months back, we were just at, at just as low as we were today, uh, maybe a couple thousand more or so. So not to, uh, nothing too crazy. So uh, coin market cap here, 121 billion. As you can see, it was 122 before I refreshed. Now 121. So we are well on our way back down to 3,200. And a lot of people believe uh, that we are going to go below 3,000 before we are going to see a real big bull run. Now, I think that just before Backed Futures is going to launch, when it does have an official launch date and they don't continuously push it back, uh, which is not really through their own fault. It's more like the SEC is sort of preventing them from going forward. But... Um, when Backed Futures comes, I think there's going to be a significant increase in price, at least, at the very least, because of the hype of Backed Futures and not necessarily because the Backed Futures is going to raise the price. And if we are at an all-time low uh, when before Backed Futures is going to come out, or at least a, a yearly low or relatively all-time low, I guess there's really almost no such thing as an all-time low, but you guys get what I'm saying there. Uh, just extrapolate your minds. And if, if it is at a, what we would believe is the low... Um, you know, then nobody's going to short Bitcoin because you have to remember that back futures is a futures market where you can short and long Bitcoin. So it's not like people are just going to exclusively long Bitcoin. We are going to have some shorters as well. And I think if we are at a very low, I think the vast majority of people are going to long Bitcoin because it's just at that point, it's just necessarily going to go up as it's really much harder to bring it down even further. Uh, it's kind of like in last December, in December 2017, that, uh, you know, we were at this all time high and we were at this, this incredible incredibly uh steep mountain on the on the charts and it was only it was only necessary it was only you know wise to short bitcoin at that point because it was such a increase in price that it was uh, almost certain to go down in price from there. So it's no wonder that everybody sort of shorted Bitcoin down low. But uh, that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, make sure you stay away from that Electrum Bitcoin wallet. Or uh, if you do, make sure you are choosing a server uh, for a node that you know is true. And like I said, if you get this update uh, security update required with this uh, link that looks really good it looks like a github link but it's really just hidden it's just a hack uh close it immediately do not click on this link uh and try and get your uh your crypto uh, on something else like a trezor wallet or a na you know nano or uh, anything even a paper wallet or even put it in custodial services like coinbase or something like that and i understand everyone's like oh coinbase you put it on an exchange it's got to be safer than clicking on a link like this at the very least. But uh, that's all I have for you guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video. That helps a lot. Also in the description below, I have a list of my social media, my Twitter, my Twitch, uh, my Steam, all that sort of thing. Uh, make sure you follow me on there. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as usual, I will see you guys next time.